This is the second video on trigeminal nerve and in this we will consider the second division of a trigeminal nerve that is maxillary nerve. We will look at the origin, course, branches and distribution or structure supplied by the maxillary nerve. You all must be knowing trigeminal nerve has got three branches or three divisions and these are the ophthalmic nerve, maxillary nerve and the mandibular nerve. So maxillary nerve is the second branch or second division of trigeminal nerve. Regarding the nuclei and the functional components of trigeminal nerve, I have considered those aspects in another video which is mainly on the mandibular nerve and I will put the link of that video in the description box of this video. Now maxillary nerve is a pure sensory nerve. That means it will not supply any muscles in the head region. In fact, uh, out of the three divisions of trigeminal, ophthalmic as well as maxillary, they are pure sensory. It is only the mandibular nerve which is a mixed nerve which supplies the muscles derived from first pharyngeal arch. So again I am repeating maxillary nerve is a pure sensory nerve. It will carry only general sensations from the skin and the mucous membrane of certain areas of the head region. So here in this picture if we look at this we can see here this is the middle cranial fossa here. This is the maxillary bone. Here we have the orbit and this is the external nose. Here we can see this purple color is the sensory root of the trigeminal nerve and anterior to that this green area is the tri trigeminal ganglion and from the anterior aspect of trigeminal ganglion we can see the three uh, divisions or branches emerging these are this is ophthalmic this light blue or sky blue color this is the maxillary nerve and this is the mandibular nerve so we will be actually considering this nerve that is the maxillary nerve in detail so let us start with the course of the maxillary nerve so maxillary nerve from where does it takes origin it arises from the anterior aspect of the trigeminal ganglion which is obvious here we can see it clearly after that the maxillary nerve is going to enter into the lateral wall or run along the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus we can see here these two nerves that is ophthalmic and maxillary they are running along the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus ophthalmic is above the maxillary nerve after this now it is going to leave the middle cranial fossa that means the cranial cavity so how does it leave it is going to pass through a foramen here which is known as foramen rotundum so by passing through foramen rotundum the maxillary nerve is going to leave the cranial cavity and is going to enter into this triangular fossa and what do we call this triangular fossa this is known as pterygopalatine fossa so after it runs along the upper part of the pterygopalatine fossa the nerve is going to leave this by passing through this opening which is known as inferior orbital fissure as the name suggests this is going to lead into the orbit and the nerve is now going to run along the floor of the orbit or in the roof of this structure which you can see here the bone has been cut this is the maxillary air sinus so now this nerve is called infraorbital nerve so continuation of maxillary nerve when it reaches the orbit we start calling it as infraorbital nerve so when it runs in the uh, floor of the orbit first it will run in a groove known as infraorbital groove later on this groove is converted into a canal so that is known as infraorbital canal after that finally the nerve is going to emerge on face so it passes through this opening here just below the orbit which is known as infraorbital foramen so when it passes through the infraorbital foramen it reaches the face so again i'll just repeat briefly the course of the maxillary nerve it emerges or takes origin from the anterior aspect of the uh, trigeminal ganglion runs in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus leaves the cranial cavity by passing through foramen rotundum runs in the upper part or near the roof of the pterygopalatine fossa leaves pterygopalatine fossa by passing through inferior orbital fissure now we start calling this nerve as infraorbital nerve
Here it is going to run in the floor of the orbit, first in a groove known as intraorbital groove, later in a canal known as infraorbital canal, and finally it passes through infraorbital foramen and reaches the face. So this is the course of maxillary nerve. Let us now consider branches of maxillary nerve. That also we will consider in four parts. First part is when the maxillary nerve is within the middle cranial fossa. So that will be branches given in the middle cranial fossa. Next, the branches which are given when the nerve is running in the upper part of pterygopalatine fossa. Third is when the nerve is running along the floor of the orbit that is in the infraorbital groove and canal. And last, the branches which are given once the nerve emerges on the face. So let us first consider the first part that is the branch or the branches given in the middle cranial fossa. Only one branch is given here and this branch is known as meningeal branch. We will consider little later what are the structures supplied by that. Let us first just remember the names of these branches. So when the nerve is passing or when the nerve is within the middle cranial fossa it gives how many branches? Only one that is meningeal branch. Next when it is in the pterygopalatine fossa, this will give three branches. These are, first we have here the ganglionic branches and these ganglionic branches are connecting it to pterygopalatine ganglion. So via the pterygopalatine ganglion, the maxillary nerve is going to provide innervation to four structures or four areas, right? And these are the orbit, the pharynx, the nasal cavity and the palate. That we will not consider here. That will be considered along with pterygopalatine ganglion. But this you must keep in mind when you uh, write about the distribution of this nerve that besides all these branches, besides all these branches, we also have ganglionic branches which will pass through pterygopalatine ganglion. So first is ganglionic branches, second is this nerve which passes through the inferior orbital fissure and runs along the lateral wall of the orbit. Lateral wall of the orbit is also formed by zygomatic bone. So this nerve is going to enter into the zygomatic bone, hence the name is zygomatic nerve. There it divides into two branches and these are zygomaticofacial which will emerge on the face and zygomaticotemporal which will be going to the anterior part of temporal region. So second branch is the zygomatic nerve. Third one is the posterior superior alveolar nerve. Posterior superior alveolar nerve, this will pass through, there are two, three openings on the posterior surface of the maxilla. Through that it will pass and here we can see it is going to supply the upper molars. So the three branches given by the nerve when it is present in the pterygopalatine fossa, they are ganglionic branches, zygomatic branch which divides into zygomaticofacial and zygomaticotemporal. And the third is posterior superior alveolar which will be supplying the molar teeth. Now the nerve passes through the inferior orbital fissure and you start calling this nerve as infraorbital nerve. Within the infraorbital, this thing, sorry, the infraorbital canal, yes, right? So there it is going to give two branches. One which is known as middle superior alveolar. This runs along the lateral wall of the maxillary sinus. Here we can see the maxillary sinus. Runs along the lateral wall of the maxillary sinus and will supply the upper premolars. Next is anterior superior alveolar nerve. This runs along the anterior wall of the maxillary sinus and this will supply the upper canine and upper incisors. So to supply the upper teeth we have three branches coming from the maxillary nerve uh, whereas on the, uh, the nerve that supplies all the lower teeth there is only one single nerve that was inferior alveolar nerve whereas we have three alveolar nerves to supply the upper teeth and these are posterior superior alveolar for upper molars, middle superior alveolar for upper premolars, anterior superior alveolar for upper canine and incisors. Now the branches finally which are given where in the face. They are palpebral as it the name suggests, skin of the lower eyelid, nasal right. So this will be supplying the skin over the nose and labial which will be supplying the upper lip.
so these are the branches that are given let's once again consider these branches so in the middle cranial fossa how many branches just one that is meningeal branch in the zygo uh, in the pterygopalatine fossa zygomatic nerve which divides into zygomatico temporal and zygomatico facial next ganglionic branches to which ganglion pterygopalatine ganglion and then we have the posterior superior alveolar nerve now in the orbit we will now call this nerve as infraorbital nerve so we will look at the branches of infraorbital nerve now so branches of infraorbital nerve when it runs in the infraorbital groove or canal middle superior alveolar anterior superior alveolar and then we have branches of infraorbital nerve on the face and these are palpebral nasal and labial so let us look at the structure supplied by direct branches of maxillary nerve why i have written direct branches because here as i told you i am not considering those branches which pass through the pterygopalatine ganglion or they are distributed via the pterygopalatine ganglion remember the four kinds of branches orbital nasal palatine and pharyngeal we are not talking about those branches here rest of the branches so first is the meningeal branch this will supply dura mater of middle cranial fossa this is very obvious because the nerve itself is present in the middle cranial fossa before it leaves the cranial cavity next is zygomatic nerve right which divides into two zygomatico facial and zygomatico temporal so they will supply skin of anterior part of temporal region that is zygomatico temporal and the prominence of cheek where we have the zygomatic bone this will be supplied by zygomatico facial branch now so we till now we know meningeal branch middle cranial fossa right one more branch you have to remember very close to the maxilla bone is the zygomatic bone so that way also you can remember that one of the branch has to be zygomatic right and which divides into zygomatico facial and zygomatico temporal now the maxillary nerve is the main nerve which is going to supply upper teeth right and remember there are three branches so now you have to give branches which will be supplying the upper teeth so first of them is the posterior superior alveolar upper molars adjoining gum and obviously they, these branches will also supply the maxillary ear sinus then we have branches of infraorbital nerve middle superior alveolar for upper premolars and gums anterior superior alveolar for upper canine and incisors and gums and also the maxillary ear sinus anterior superior alveolar nerve in fact is going to supply some a part of the mucosa of the nasal cavity also then on the face we have palpebral branch right this will supply skin of lower eyelid nasal branch this will supply the skin of side of nose ala of nose and mobile part of septum of nose and the labial branch this is going to supply the skin and mucous membrane of upper limb so you can remember it this way the areas which are very close to the maxilla right so those areas they will be supplied by the maxillary nerve so that's all for this video thanks for watching and if you have not subscribed please subscribe my channel so that i can put more such videos and if you want uh the questions and answers in anatomy all types of that then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com thanks once again